As pressure mounts for more transparency from the U.S. government on UFO sightings, a new voice has been added to that call. Lobbyist Nick Gold founded the group Declassify UAP last week. He calls it a grassroots effort, pushing for more transparency and more information on unexplained aerial phenomenon. This follows the historic hearings in Congress last week when three military officers testified about UAP sightings, saying they believe that the U.S. government knows much more than it's letting on. I believe strongly uh, in the importance of bringing this information before you. I am driven by a commitment of both uh, to truth and transparency, rooted in our inherent duty to uphold the United States Constitution and protect the American people. Lawmakers at the hearing said they are taking steps to make sure they get more information from the Pentagon and from the U.S. military. It marks a whole new chapter of open discussion on UAPs, which might sound promising for the founder of Declassify UAP, Nick Gold, who joins me now. Nick, tell me about this movement. What are you planning to do? How are you planning to do it? Thanks for having me on, Elizabeth. So I've been involved in the scientific inquiry into UAP for the past few years. I was a member of the Galileo Project. I'm now currently a member of the Scientific Coalition for UAP Studies. And I've had an interest in this topic since I was a kid in the 80s, you know, just being fascinated with UFOs and all of that good stuff. And, you know, what I've observed for years now is that, you know, many of the types of topics we have interest around as citizens that we elevate into becoming issues that we engage around with our elected representatives, those orgs largely didn't exist for the UAP topic. And, you know, given, you know, the potential magnitude of what this might imply, and we don't take an official stance on what right. UAP might amount to, but we realized we need to have the public putting more pressure on our elected representatives if we expect any movement on this. So yeah. I wanted to start an organization that gives those tools to people. We heard in those hearings last week from you know, two of the three witnesses were military pilots who said that many of their own videos that they record of UAPs when they're out uh, flying maneuvers, doing exercises, that sort of thing, are classified. Um, and, and nobody and can't be shown to anybody. What are you doing with your group to try and put pressure on Congress to then put pressure on the military to declassify these videos. Many voices coming together. And I think that's the only thing that we can do. I started this as a lobbying organization and I will be engaging in some direct lobbying, but that lobbying really needs to be backed up by the voices of ideally hundreds of thousands of American voters, if not more, who are coming together in a concerted fashion and making very specific asks about the type of information we expect to see. And I'm going to be providing lots of evidence that shows we should expect to see this type of stuff, whether it's videos the Air Force releases of you know Russian jets shooting flares at our drones over the Black Sea, which we get crystal clear video of. You're showing some of the video up now that has been released of UAP, but we're not seeing the interesting stuff. They've described the interesting stuff. They've acknowledged it happens, including ONI, but we don't get to see it. And that's really a strange situation. And Give I think- Give me an example. It, like of some, when you say the interesting stuff, what are you talking about? Well, let's take that Tic Tac incident from 2004 that David Fravor described at the hearing. And I, I managed to get into the hearing last week. It was incredible to kind of be at that historic moment, getting you know, to hear him describe this science fiction sounding encounter. And we have to remember, the deputy director of the Office of Naval Intelligence, Scott Bray, in the House hearing last year, confirmed that the public is basically aware of what happened in the Tic Tac incident, that the Navy has data on that incident that validates that our understanding of the incident essentially took place, and they have multiple sensors that validate that. And yet we haven't seen any of that. We haven't seen it. Even well, we've a seen the video we're looking at right it. now. We have seen some video from David Fravor's encounter, but as David Fravor testified, you're right. There were many other pilots in the skies that night. There was an aircraft carrier uh, at, on the ocean floor, on the ocean surface below. So, and they were tracking it with their radar. And you know, the military is collecting, according to their accounts, up to hundreds of UAP reports a month at least in the range of 50 to 100 on average over the last several years, they've been collecting data. We see a very small amount of that True. data and that information. Well, hopefully after your group gets working, we'll see a lot more of it. 
you yes, and the please congressman have us who back are... <laughs> on after declassifyuap.org launches. I can't wait to tell people more about it. All right, Nick Gold, thanks so much for being with us. Tonight. Thanks so much for watching. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.